Joining us uh, now, Jeff Lewis, uh, Executive Director and Head of Investment Services, JP Morgan Asset Management. Jeff, good morning. Uh, first up, want to get your reaction to uh, the speech that we heard from the Prime Minister, uh, of course, on the occasion of independence. Uh, you know, it was it was an extempore speech and yeah. one that really fired up everyone here. Uh, you know, in, in terms of his sheer enthusiasm and vision for India, how did it appeal to you? Uh, well, I think it, it was a speech. Uh, there were not too many specifics in it, but I think it showed what we've come to expect from Mr. Modi. This is going to be a government full of energy and determination. Um, they, they hit the road running and they're, they're not going to stop. Uh, but also, I think it, it emphasizes that this is going to be an inclusive government. It's going to be a government for all sections of Indian society. It's not just in your ink, it's just not just the business community. I think there was a lot of stress on that. Uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Modi referred back to India's uh, tremendous traditions of uh, democracy and pluralistic institutions, and also to longer history, such as the uh, Mauryan Emperor Ashoka, who decided that he would be an enlightened ruler. So I think this, is a, this was a very good speech, and uh, I think it sets a very good tone for the next four to five years. Jeff, for all these months that we've been you know, talking to you, we've been talking to some of your colleagues as well, everyone's been pretty optimistic as far as the Indian markets are concerned. And they've shown that with the kind of inflows that we've seen in terms of the foreign money. The question is, what, what, what exactly does the foreign community really want to see when we talk about uh, from, from this government, which is some of those most important steps that are at the top of the list in terms of, we should probably get that optimism you know, going even further in terms of fund flows. Um, well, it's, it's a difficult time in that uh, expectations are very high, of course, and foreign money has started to flow in quite nicely. It, it's, it's not flooding in at an enormous rate. It's coming in at a, a moderate, absorbable rate. I think that's quite good. I would, have I would think the danger is, as most of Mr. Modi's economic program will take time to really have positive impacts, uh, Supply-side reforms, for example, will take at least two to three years before they have an impact. Uh, he's not really in a hurry, and markets tend to get impatient. So it wouldn't surprise me if we do go through a, a period of a week, a few months, perhaps, as uh, people now have really had a lot of the good news. They've got the government in place, but they have to wait, really. Uh, they're going to have to wait before they start to see any results come through. So uh, from that point of view... Uh, it, I would not expect the market to be as strong in the second half of the year as it has been in the first half of the year. All right. Uh, in terms of you know expectations uh, going forward as well, uh, Jeff, uh, and, and global cues that you're tracking, just take us through some of the, the major triggers that are on your radar at the moment. We've also, of course, got the Jackson Hole meeting coming up as well. Are you expecting anything from that? Uh, in, in terms of the, the economic numbers, uh, the, the last uh, numbers on industrial production and uh, inflation were a little bit disappointing, I suppose. So that's telling us that um, uh, it's, it's been a long bottoming process for the Indian economy. And it, I think it's going to be a while before we see uh, unambiguously better trends in the economic data. So uh, still a little bit of volatility. But I think uh, in, most investors would say, well, the odd number or two which uh, is disappointing, they can, they can, they're prepared almost to turn a blind eye to that because they believe that we are at an important uh, turning point in terms of the underlying trend direction. Mm. You, know, you know, I was mentioning about the other bit, Jeff, that was Jackson Hole itself. Any comment there? Because... That's probably the other big trigger on the global front that markets will now be keeping an eye out for. We've got that meeting later this week. A anything looking at the way that the past uh, few commentaries have actually played out on the Fed side, I is there anything in the emerging market bit that one needs to probably keep an eye out for this time around from the Jackson Hole meeting? Uh, in terms of uh, our outlook on, for the emerging markets uh, in, and the Fed and uh, interest rates being tightened, um, we think it's quite likely that the Fed will actually move a bit earlier than the consensus, or maybe the first quarter of next year. But it is going to be a normalization. And uh, beyond any sort of short knee-jerk reaction, which tends to be to last no more than three to four months, I think uh, we'll 
seen money continue to move back into the emerging markets because, after all, we've passed that point in time when the growth divergence between the developed and the, economy and the emerging economies was at its narrowest. Uh, that, that time has passed. So we're getting to a, a point in time, I think, where we're going to see earnings start to improve in the emerging markets. And these pull factors, uh, in my view, will outweigh the uh, negative push factor from a, a higher U.S. interest rate. So, Jeff, is it fair to conclude then the fact that, you know, some of the emerging markets like India are probably in a much better position right now to face any of those knee-jerk reactions or any of those, uh, you know, uh, upsets that could actually come in from, uh, so from the developed markets or even for that matter with the end of tapering around the corner? Are, are, are the emerging markets like India in a much better place now? Um, I think we are seeing um, a, a change of view of uh, uh, international uh, fund managers. The latest survey showed quite a big reallocation away from Eurozone equities towards the emerging market equities. Uh, India does not look as cheap, obviously, after the rally that it's had relative to the other emerging markets, but then it has uh, much stronger fundamentals, fundamentals which could easily see earnings growth uh, averaging 15 to 20 percent over the next uh, two to three years. Uh, and that's something, I think, which will continue to attract uh, overseas investors to the Indian equity market.